Hey everyone, it's Game Dev with Drew, and we have a problem. 13% of you guys in the last video were not subscribed. I want to hit that zero or like zero to five percent. So let's hope we can do that. In the last video, we went over on how to just set up our scene and just make Godot work how we want it to. And now in this episode, we have our character that we want to move. And in this uh, tutorial series, we're going to do uh, four directional movement. But in the next tutorial series, probably next week, we're going to do platforming movement, which is also very easy to do. We just have to add in gravity. So let's get right into it. First of all, this guy's really small. Let's size him up a little bit. So let's do what we learned uh, yesterday or in the last video. We go into our player scene, uh, which should already be open. But if it's not, if it's like closed like this, we can go into our scenes where we saved it go into the player folder and double click player.scene. When you do that, it should just open up perfectly. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, you can resize the kinematic or the character body if we just click it and go into transform. But I don't wanna do that because sometimes messing with the rotation and scale and stuff of a character body can be a little bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scale up our PNG by going into our sprite, it's called night. We're going to click transform, make the scale. I'm going to do 2.5. So now he's bigger. And now we'll go into the collision shape 2D, go into transform and make the scale 2.5 as well. Next, I'm going to go into our night and we're going to center him by pressing this little reload tool. So now he's centered perfectly. And then we are going to set our collision shape to just be over him. Perfect. Now we can. Uh, make his collision a little better. I'm going to put it not on the sword because like, he's not part of his sword. And that's it. So now we cl click Control S. When we press play, he's going to be bigger. See? That's a good size. Now, let's get into movement and stuff like that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to click our character body 2D, which we call player. We're going to click our root node. Typically, what we do is we make scripts on our root node. And then if we want to add a script on one of our child nodes, we just make a new scene out of it so it can be reproduced. That's what I like to do. I don't know if uh, that's like normal, but like I like to keep like a component system. And I can get into what a component system is in a further video. But for now, we're just doing the basics and we're just going to keep on going through. So we're going to click this add script button in the top left. You can also right click and press attach script. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna click that. And we are not going to turn on a template. You can just have a character body 2D basic movement, but this is for platformer. So I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do is gonna turn off the template and choose our path. As you can see, our path is res uh, slash slash scenes. So we don't wanna be inside there. So we click this folder right here. And then we click this up arrow twice. And now we're in the scripts folder. Uh, or we we are in a res basic directory. We then go into our scripts folder. And then we don't really need to make a new folder for this because there's no other go there's not gonna be any other scripts uh, inside of a folder called player. So we're just gonna click open. Now we're inside the correct directory and we will click, press create. So here's the here's the thing. We need a couple things to do, and what I'm going to talk about is how we are going to do them. First of all, line one extends character body 2D. Never delete this. This should always stay on either line one or line two. Um, that's There's only one exception when you put it on line two is when you add an icon. But icons aren't something we need to worry about right now. So extends character body 2D is sort of just like inheritance. Inheritance is just something that you need, like our building block, our character body 2D is part of a build, bigger building block. That's basically what it is. We can talk about inheritance in a further video as well. I hate how I'm saying further video and all that stuff, but it, it really is not necessary to what we're doing right now. So the thing is, we only need like one component for our character, one variable. So if you guys have ever done any programming or saw my 
uh, Godot programming playlist. Uh, I'll put it in the top right. Uh, it's going to be up here. <laughs> uh, you can click that icon. Um, I'm just going to teach you guys how to declare a variable and make a function today. And a couple if statements, um, which is very simple. It's nothing we really need to worry about. So to declare a variable in Godot, you type in var. And the variable we want to do is called speed. So we're going to call var space speed equals. And we're going to do a big number. And I'll explain why we do a big number. We do 20,000. Anywhere between like 10,000 and like 40,000 is good. It doesn't really matter. You can play with the speed however much you want. You can have your guy go as fast as you want. I don't really care. So we'll do 20,000. And if you want to add commas, you don't do commas in uh, any programming languages that I know of. You can do uh, an underscore. So I'll have an underscore right there just so you know that it's 20, 0, 0, 0. Next, we really just need to get into the beef of our code. And that is called function physics process. So to declare a function, we type in func. And to get a built-in um, function, we start with an underscore and then type in physics process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press tab and then it fills it all for me. What is this stuff that I have? It's custom editor settings that I have um, for returning and static typing. I will get into static typing as well in a intermediate uh, tutorial, probably coming in the near future. We can do static typing um, on our speed, but I'm not going to right now because this is a beginner tutorial. This is for anyone to enter into the into Godot. What you guys will have is what I'll just delete my stuff into it. You guys will have this. It's it's just stuff that I have added in. If you want to add them in, click editor, editor settings, and then you can type in, I'm pretty sure it's in the code completion, and then add type hints. It's very, it's type hints, static typing, sort of the same thing. I also added this pass so I don't have any uh, errors. Uh, a red error will show up eventually. Yeah, so I'm just going to add in pass because I don't like to have my errors in. And I'm going to add a couple lines just so we can do some coding in a bit. So really what we want to do is make our character move. And before we make can make our character move, we need to add in four buttons to move our character. So what we're going to do is we go press project, project settings, input map. In our, in our input map, we are going to make uh, our like inputs to move our character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in move dash up, move dash left, move dash right, move dash down. This is because we are doing four directional movement. Also, we're halfway through the video. Make sure to subscribe because I really want um, a bigger community and we're about to hit a thousand subs, so may as well join. Also, if you're this far, Make sure you comment down below saying if you like the video or not. I want to see those comments. So now we're going to add the actual inputs. As you can see, we have move up, move down, le move left, whatever. They don't have any inputs attached to them. So what we do is we go over to the right and we click plus. And since I'm doing move up, it's listening for our keyboard keys. So I'm going to press W and then move left, A, move right D, move down S. You can go through again and add like up key and whatnot, but I'm not gonna add any arrow keys because I don't really want to. There's no reason for me to do it right now. So after that, we click close. And now we can get into like the actual coding of making our character move. So I'm gonna go down to line nine. You got, it doesn't really matter what line you're in. I just want you guys so, uh, to follow along with me. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can read my code better. <laughs> Now, because uh, I because I saw that in a comment maybe like seven months ago. Now we're gonna get into coding. We're gonna make an if statement. An if statement just checks if something is true or something is false. What we're gonna do is we're gonna check if our input is true. We're gonna check if we're inputting something. So we're making an input if input capital I. Keep that in mind. If input dot is underscore action underscore pressed. You can auto-complete that if you want, and then it'll have another auto-completion for you to choose one of the inputs that you have. 
So I'm going to do move right first. And then we move right once and add a colon because we are doing an if statement. And this is a Python-like language, so you don't really have to worry about brackets. Next, we need to fix something. We need to add something to our character. So our character body 2D has something called velocity. It has a built-in velocity. And what we're going to do is we're going to change our velocity's x value. And we're and to change it, we're going to add to it. So to add to something, we do plus equals. And we're going to do speed times delta. Now I'm about to flashbang you. OK, so I have all my code written down. <laughs> Next time, I'm just going to control C, control V, and make an image. Uh, I'm actually going to move my code over a little bit, though. And now uh, I'm going to tell you what this code does. So an if statement, it checks if something is true. Uh, and it's going to check if our input, it's going into our input map. So if we go into here, we go into project and project settings and input map, this is our capital I input directory. Now it's going to go into is action pressed. So what is action pressed is we have our D key right here. It's if it's being held down or tapped or whatnot. So if it's if it's being held down, it's going to call. It's going if it's being held down on our D key, which is our move right. It's a it's our stand in for D. We are going to add velocity dot x to speed times delta. That's a very weird thing, especially if you're not like if you're not taking physics or if you're not in like school right now. I'm gonna break it down for you. So I'm gonna draw two lines. And you guys might know what I'm drawing. You're right. It's a coordinate grid. So what we have here is our coordinates. And I do this in my class all the time because I teach people uh, how to code at, in my job. And I just draw a coordinate grid and let them fill it out. So what this coordinate grid is doing is velocity has an x and a y value. So right now, our velocity has 0, 0. And what we're going to do is we're going to set and add speed times delta. And we're only adding it in the x value. So if we're only adding in the x value, we don't have to worry about our y component right now. We only need to worry about our x value. And it's just going to add every single time. Every single frame, it's going to add that. So what speed does, or plus equals, it just sets it to and then adds again. So if we have 0, it'll end we have plus equals 20 it will now be 20 and then we have plus equals 30 and now we have 50. instead if we just did equals it would be 0 equals 20 okay so now it's set to 20 but then it'll be like 20 equals i don't know 40 so then it'll be set to 40. we don't want that because it's not as good okay so now we have we're adding speed times delta let me get into what speed is. We declared the variable speed as 20,000. So if you just wanted to write 20,000 every single time, you can. It's the same thing. But we do, sh we do variables so we can store things. So we have our 20,000, and we're multiplying by this weird delta. You may not have heard of delta. It's in most programming languages, or it's in like calculus or physics. But in this situation, delta isn't a change in something. It is a actual number. And what delta is, it is one frame. And that's a really weird question. That's a really weird, like, open-ended thing. Because, like, how long is a frame? And in our game, our physics process runs at 60 FPS. If we're running at 60 FPS, that means we have 60 frames a second that means we have one sixtieth of a second for every one frame and that's what delta is so if i do one divided by 60 it should be like 0. 0.016 yep so point and that should just equal 0. 0.0166 repeated so that's what we're multiplying by and the reason why we multiply by that is because we want our code in meters a second rather than in frames so if i did twenty thousand, it would move faster or slower depending on the frame rate of your computer 
That's basically it is like the hertz of your computer. So let's get back into our code. Now, let's get into the next one. Let's move left. So if input dot is underscore action underscore pressed, move left, what do you guys think we're going to do? We're going to do velocity dot x minus equals speed times delta. We're going to subtract our, by our speed and multiply by delta so we can actually go left. Next, we're going to go into a really weird part. If input dot is underscore action pressed move up, we're going to do velocity dot y. That makes sense, right? But we're going to do minus equals speed times delta. Now in Godot, going up, going up is negative. I don't know why. I tell that to my students. They don't understand it either. It kind of stinks, I'm, and I'm, it, but it's all right. So up is negative. Just remember that for the rest of your life in Godot. It's just something that you can work around. It doesn't really matter. So if, if up is negative, then down must be, you guessed it, positive. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to make one more if statement. Input dot is underscore action pressed move down we're going to do velocity dot y plus equals speed times delta easy as that easy as pi so what do i have a i don't have i don't actually have an error there's not actually an error so if we press play we're going to realize that we don't move isn't that crazy the reason why you don't move is because Godot has this built-in function for a character body called move underscore and underscore slide. You can also do move and collide, but I do move and slide move and slide because that's just what I do. So move and slide, always have it at the bottom of your code. If you have it at uh always have it at the bottom of the code. And if you press play, you can now move around. But what the heck? Why did I move so fast? Like you're thinking like Drew you told us that 20,000 isn't too fast That's because we are adding 20,000 times 0.016 every single frame and We don't want that What we're going to do is set our Velocity dot X and velocity dot Y to zero every frame as well Velocity dot Y equals zero the reason why we're doing that is like sort of like a built-in friction and it just allows us to stop every frame and it makes it look smooth. So look at that. Now we move. Now we move in four directions and that's it. That is all I have to show you for today's video, guys. Thank you all so much for watching and uh, I'll see you all in the next video, hopefully. Bye, everyone.